Hi. How great to be with you this morning. I'm so blessed when I saw the worship, and thank you for worshiping. Thank you for touching my heart. And I saw there were people that came from different time. And one of the things that my dad used to do, uh, my dad was a pastor, is when we get together, we need to appreciate one another, to say hello to one another. And I went on a women retreat one time, and uh, the leader said, you, let's give a welcome to one another. So I went and approached, I was sitting close to the, to the speaker, and I, you know, gave her a welcome with my hands being so, she said, no, that's not a Christian welcome. And let me show you what I want you to do right now. Laura, come forward. And I want you to look, a woman, look for another woman. And a man, look for another man. Let's take a step. Get up where you're sitting. Let's embrace one another. Look for somebody you haven't seen for a long time. But see first how I do it. You're going to see first. You're going to look first how I do it with Laura. And then I want you to follow to see how I do it. Okay? Are you ready? Oh, I have to stay over there. Okay. Okay. This is called a nanny hug that we're giving, a nanny hug. A man will give another man a, a hug, and a woman will give another woman a hug in Jesus' name. Let's watch. Mm. Do you see that? Did you see that? You have to feel the hug. <laughs> you have to feel the person hugging you, and it's good to be touched. And as being, uh, stay here? Okay, okay. As being in the medical field, touch means a lot. When you go to the doctor, touching you, examine you, and when you see a patient at the bedside, when a doctor doesn't have good manners, it speaks a lot. And when a doctor has good manners, you go on the side bed of the patient. You touch the patient. How are you? You look the patients in their face. It makes a big difference. So us as Christians, we need to encourage one another. When you haven't seen somebody for a long time, give them a nanny hug. Oh. A nanny hug. Make them feel like you really love them and you really miss them. What a privilege. Thank you. What a privilege to be with you this morning. Let's give God a hand. Come on. Come on. Let's give God a hand. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Billy and Pastor Laura, for inviting us. Like Billy said, we've been friends for so long, for so many times. I remember my son was only seven years old when we would sit down on the table and have dinner and fellowship. And Pastor Billy would say, oh, my God, how do you make the seven-year-old sit together with you on the table? Well, that was our uh, culture. That's what, we, that's what we did. So that's to tell you, my son is 22 years old now. That's to tell you how long. I knew, we knew Pastor Billy. What a blessed man you have with you. What a privilege you have him as a pastor, him and his wife, to serve you. Thank the Lord for that. He had his call going to Romania. I remember when what I, the, the, the picture of Pastor Billy I have, in my, uh, I have in my mind is he used to have a Ferrari. I don't even know if you remember. It was a red one. He used to be, uh, he was a professor at Marist College, for those of you who didn't know that. Um, and when he's going to, um, to, 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 to teach, he, I su used to see him on Route 9 with that little red Ferrari when we're just taking off in that little sports car. I'm like, look at Billy. And then when he heard the call from God, going to Romania, just going to, without knowing anybody there, just listening to the word of God, and I was like, wow. He went, planted a church there, met his beautiful wife, Laura, came back so many times to visit. And when it was time that he heard the, heard the call from God that he no longer belong in uh, Romania, and where he end up is with you guys. What a privilege. And we are so blessed to have him 
And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I ask you to encourage them in the work of the Lord. They make a lot of sacrifices to be with you. They make a lot of sacrifices, leaving their family behind. But they love you so much. All they talk about is their church, their church family. And you are so privileged. And I know that they both are a blessing, a blessing to you. When I first started in the ministry, um, Pastor Loba was such an encouragement. When I first started talking to her about going to Haiti, I said to her, I don't know, I'm not sure. She was such an encouragement. She said, Rose, when you go out there, you stand in front of the people and you say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I did just that. I remember those encouragement. I wasn't shy when I stepped in front of him. Said, she said, you already have it in you. You're already blessed. And you just have to share the word. Well, that's, that's what we did. My husband told you, and thank God for my wonderful husband, I wouldn't be here without my husband. We've been married. I'm not telling you. We've been married. We were 16 years old when we married. That's just to, not to tell you our age. <laughs> um, and he has been such a constant, wonderful, loving man. And I'm so grateful that God planted him in my life because I'm sure would not be here. Um, Pastor Billy and everybody said, you know, Dr. Woodward, well, I'm who I am because of him. It's his encouragement that pursued me to get my degree, to get my, to, to go in the medical field. And he is the one that is, that, that is the one that trumpet. And I'm so grateful. And I thank God for him today. My husband told you that his pastor, Pastor Vic, both of our pastor, who is our leader and who is really like a father to us, had encouraged him to go to Haiti. And you could start projecting the pictures. And when he came home from Haiti, um, a little background for me. I was born in Haiti. I left Haiti as a child. My parents were missionaries in Haiti. And they came. They had a church down in Brooklyn. And uh, at one point of time, my husband wanted to show my, our son what Haiti looks like, and we went to Haiti. I don't remember how old he was at that time. When we came back, Haiti was like a brand new place to me. I didn't remember the place that we lived. Everything was just broken. It was shackled. That was before the earthquake. And I told my husband, I just, just remind me, just, you know, when, I, when the next time you want to go to Haiti, this is not the place for me. Haiti is not the place for me. I don't think I can go back to Haiti because it's just a devastating place. And it was before the earthquake. Now, after the earthquake, he went with Pastor Vic. And then when he came home, he said, Rose, I got something for you. And I'm like, oh, okay. He bought me something from Haiti. That's good. And he's like, no, Rose, I got something for you. I said, what it is? He said, I think we need to go to Haiti on a mission field. I said, what? I said, didn't you remember we had that conversation? I said, I'm not going to Haiti anymore. And then on top of that, I was very content. I was very happy in my church down in uh, Hyde Park, New York. Um, I mentioned my parents were well, both pastors. I saw what they went through, the sacrifices that I saw they made when we, were, when we were children. And I had promised myself, I said, this is not for me. I do not want to be a pastor. I do not want to go on a mission field. All I want to do, I want to serve God. I, I, I do want to, I, I did the girls club. I do Sunday school, all the things on the side. But I don't want to submerge myself. I don't want to be involved with, pe with, with, with people. Kids are fine. And uh, he said, no, Rose. He said, I think there is uh, something for us in Haiti. I battled with it a whole year. I said, no, I said, no. And finally, I said, okay. You asked me so much. I'm going to do it to please you, but only once. I'm going to go. We're going to do it. And that will be it. Well, God had opened the door many ways on how are we going to do that. I have never practiced in Haiti. I didn't know what to do. How do we get supply there? How, but God had put people in my way that had taught me and showed me what to do in order not only to go to Haiti to preach the word, but also to do a clinic where people can come and they can be, they can be, they, and they can come to the clinic and be seen as primary care and then also bring medication and bring supply and on top of that, give them the word. And I was like, wow, what a blessing. 
to be able, not only I'm touching them um, in a physical way, but also I'm touching them in a spiritual way. And I couldn't think of any blessing more than that. And what a privilege. I said, God, why me? I didn't even want to do this. I didn't even want to be involved. Well, I did it once, and I fell in love with the people of Haiti again. And I couldn't think of anything more. And it's, it's, uh, this past year was our seventh trip going to Haiti. And every year, these are the containers, as you see. You could start rolling the pictures. This is how we sent the supply down. We pack them in those big blue container, and they go down to Haiti. And we have donation from different pharmaceutical companies that donated. And every year, we put a team together. This year, we were 10. And everybody put their own, everybody pay for their own uh, fees to go. And we find a place to go to Haiti. Every year, we go to a different impoverished place. And there's places that we go, people don't have money to receive health care. I mean, you think here in the United States, you all, have, you all have your primary. You have your cardiologist. You have your pulmonologist. There's a doctor for everything. In Haiti, there's these people where we go in the mountain, they don't have that privilege. You have to pay for everything. You have to pay for money. This is us in the church that we went. It was in Gantier in Haiti. And this is the team that went together. And when we go in the church, when we go, we go, usually we go in a community that has a church. Because the church is the biggest place where you can find that you will see that we will transfer the church into the clinic. Um, and separate it. You know, my husband get donation from St. Francis Hospital with those big curtains, and when you walk in the church, it will, you separate it and make the clinic out of it. And that sat, we land usually on Friday, and that Saturday, this is us worshiping in, with, uh, with, with the team at that church, and the people, they're hungry for God, hungry for God. And we look outside, it was dry. The land was dry. It doesn't look like the crop. It doesn't look, there was, the land was producing anything because it was so airy, that area. Um, and when we go also, we go play. We, we do um, skits. And this is us doing a skit with the people. We demonstrate it first, and then they get participation. Uh, uh, they, get, they get to participate in the, in, in the skit also. As you can see, worshiping. And we are so grateful here in America because we don't know. And during the clinic day, my husband had to go out and purchase mango. You know, when you go to a Caribbean, mango is the fruit of the land. When you go in a place, you have to go buy mango for the people that live in the town. You know how poor they are because the tree should have been falling right in their backyard. There were none of that. And... They came forward, they, we prayed for them, we had salvation. And every year as we go, the people get so touched, they get so humble by us coming to not only to teach them, not only to worship with them, but also to, to, have, the medical, to, have, to have the medical clinic. Um, we are in the process at the, at the moment, getting ready again for next year. As we come every year, we already know where we're going the next year. We do have a team in Haiti that works with us that help us find those communities that the people, you know, have so much need. And they give us idea, and then when we come back, we get together and uh, we're able to go to that place. And God had opened many doors. I can tell you, my life took a big turn when I say yes to God. When I say yes, I will do it. I was comfortable. I had to step into that place where I didn't know what I was going to meet. I'm a, I'm, I'm a planner. I need to know where I'm going from A to Z. My husband is different. My husband is just need to know, okay, this is where we're going. No, I need to know what time are we supposed to get there? What highway are we taking? Where are we staying? Where are we going to eat? And 
this was a challenge because going to Haiti is a challenge because you don't know what you're going to meet on the other side. You don't know, you know, we don't, you don't know what you're going to see. And by taking that step, taking that challenge, God blessed us so much. Um, Billy mentioned, you know, we have, a, we have a mention, this is all God's grace and all his promises and all the things, you know, that we prayed for come to fruition because we take that step, because we said yes. Because we were ready to be uncomfortable. Because sometimes as Christians, we get comfortable in what we're doing. But no, God wants you to take that step. That step forward where you're going to say yes to the ministry. And where you are, there's a ministry. You don't have to go to Haiti to Africa to minister. Where you are sitting right here in your church, you have a ministry. The worship team, that's their ministry. That's their ministry. The music, the people who are directing the music, that's their ministry. And in everything you're doing, you do, it well. you do it well. You do it for the grace of God. My husband mentioned uh, seed ministry. When we go also to those mountains, we distribute seeds to the people and it's like it's like gold everything you give them it's like gold and we've learned our lives have changed as we go the children we give them when they come to the clinic we put things together like socks you know hair clip and things like that that we give them as gift as they come um, as as they as they, as they come to the as they come to the clinic um how do we get the team together? The team together is just like I'm talking, anybody who's been willing to go with us, and we are ready, and we do have certain training that we do with the team, uh, which is you don't have to be there physically. We do phone conference. We do about 10 phone conference every year to be able to get the people, uh, to get you ready to go to Haiti. And we have an open door, and everybody raise their phone, and that's how you get, um, if you want to get involved, in the, um, in, uh, in, in the, in the ministry. Um, you see the children, there's no place usually for the children to sit. So we bring, you see the top on the floor, we bring everything. When you're thinking about a clinic here, you walk into your doctor's office and they have everything. Everything you think you will need for a clinic, we pack those because where we go, these are not available to us. Usually um, we have... Um, we have Bible study with the kids. When we meet with the adults inside the church, we take the children outside and we meet and we meet. And you should see their little heart. And you should see how children, I don't know how the children, you know, they're so well behaved. I don't know if their parents, you know, you know talk to them before they come in. And it's like, you better behave, but everybody well behaved. Now, this is one of the day of the clinic. You could see the people sitting outside. And the turf that we put in front, of, in, front, in, front of the, in front of the church to allow them not to sit in the sun. We start the clinic at 8, and usually people start getting online at 6 o'clock in the morning. And it's, it's, it's heartbroken because it's impossible to see everybody. Um, usually we see 100 people a day. Um, by the time the clinic is over, we see about four to 500, four to 500 people. And... It's still sometimes you still left people that still say they want to be seen, but physically we can't because usually it's just me and then another provider that's, uh, that's, uh, that's there. Um, this is a donation that we had from a company, and it's called a moonshine. You should see all these girls, and usually when they have their menses, they don't go to school because they don't have anywhere, you know, any material to use. This company donated those little bags, and what they are is that the women, they are reusable sanitary napkin. They wash them. Um, the company that donated them is called Mooncatcher, and we were so blessed, and they were so happy to be able to get these. Now they can go to school on their day. Now they can go to, can come to church. They don't have to be bound because that's, uh, that's usually a barrier for young girls in third world country that when it's that time of the month they don't go anywhere because they don't have anything they don't have anything to use um i'm sure you know haiti we forgot to say where it is it's in the caribbean it's one of the poor nation that was hit, hit by the earthquake in 2010 and still now there's still places that are still rebuilding there's still you know people that are still in need this is the church that i talk about that we separated uh, and we have the people my this is my husband now registering the people on the outside and uh and 
as you see, you know, with the pictures, that's what the picture is about. Thank you for allowing me to come and share our hearts. We are so blessed and so privileged, and we love Pastor Billy and Pastor Leroy. And now we have a new family, which is you, a new you, and I thank you so much, and may God bless you.